Out of all okay. that we've yeah, done I would for say, the past two days, I would agree. Yeah. So there's just a lot of steps to them. Um, like anything else, I try to kind of simplify these things. We're not going to go and you know physically do. Point out what we have here. All right, the equipment. This is our water bath. We want our intensive. The sandy soil is uh, 100 grams or 125 mm -hmm. of them. Great. 100 grams. Okay. So Great the is 50. different in weights. Okay. 50 and 100. 50 and 100. Clay 50. Sandy 100. Okay, so we have to separate that out passing the number 10 sieve. By the way, has anybody run this? Ever Have played around with no, it? No, we don't usually run this. I don't. Okay, okay. okay. Just, you just, don't run anything. <laughs> he runs the show, that's what he I'm runs, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we have our material prepared, okay? We have it weighed out, we know what it is, all right? And if we're going through, it's showing us our apparatus, which we're seeing here. These are 1,000 uh, milliliter pycnometers or flasks, we'll call them. Uh, glass stirring rods. So you can see this little fancy thing there. I'll try to work it with you guys because I know it is crowded. Okay, but this is where we're going to end up adding that sodium hexametaphosphate calgon, okay, to our samples. All right, and then we're going to want to mix that up, and that's basically to kind of let those those particles uh, debond and kind of just flow freely okay through suspension all right so for following here sodium hexametaphosphate is basically mixed up 40 grams to a liter of water that's what they have in this uh, amber colored flask we'll call it back there okay and that's what we're going to want to add into basically mix that in with our soil sample okay so what we would end up doing is measuring out 125 milliliters of that. All right, I'm going to not push everybody all around. So we would weigh out 125 milliliters of our sodium hexametaphosphate solution. Okay, we would add it into. We could say dump this into here. Add 125 milliliters in. Okay, and then we're going to want to stir that around. Everybody's got me. We're just kind of mixing that up real quick. But we're not going to be doing that for the test, correct? You're going to talk me through it kind of like we're okay, doing right okay. here. Yeah, because I mean, I'm not going to have, you know, 30 samples set up or 13 yeah, yeah, samples yeah. or whatnot and have to be cleaning and doing dishes all day over there. All so right, it's so, a week to do the test. Yeah, I mean, it would be here quite some time. So it's, you know, you each get about an hour to blow through every one of these tests that you have to do is what it kind of comes to be. Okay. Um, so again, you know, there's a lot of imagination here and kind of seeing things, but any, let's get back on track. We have our material mixed with our 125 milliliters of sodium hexametaphosphate solution. Okay, we put it in, mix it up, let it sit for 12 hours. All right, everybody's following me? At that point, we need to then go and we are going to <coughs> blend things up, okay? One thing I want you guys to know is that we have our flask that we're gonna end up actually running our test on, and then we kind of have our clean water flask, let's say, okay? So in between readings, we end up taking this hydrometer out, like Tom said, we just put it in the water and spin it around, okay? Another thing that we want to do with this is check for that meniscus, all right? And it's a very hard thing to see. You can look in here if you want, but it's got numbers, okay? Zero through, I don't know if it's 60 that's on here or so. Where that water comes up the side of this hydrometer, okay? from the water level to where it kind of creeps up the side, that difference is what's going to be our correction. Okay, so when we take readings, we're taking a reading at the top of that water channel, let's call it, okay? But we know what our correction is. So when we get done with all our readings, we're going to have to subtract whatever our correction is. All right, everybody understands that? Because the thing that's going to be is once we mix the, up our actual sample, there will be some foam at the top, it's not clear water, you're not going to be able to, to see as well. Okay, all right, so this should be at 20C, same as our actual sample, all right. So we had our sample sitting here, now we have our uh, strawberry milk mixer, we'll call it over here, okay, our milkshake mixer. We're going to want to empty that material out, all right, into here, rinse everything in, all right, and add distilled water, all right, or demineralized, I believe it says in your book filling this up about halfway. Just gonna eyeball it, all right? Don't wanna put too much in because when we put it in this mixer for 60 seconds, all right, it'll blow all over the place. All right, so we're just putting in enough so that it could really just 
kind of mix up and it's not like a thick paste, let's say. All right, everybody's got me? So it's gonna go in that mixer for 60 seconds, okay? Once we're done with that, we're gonna trans transfer our slurry, I think people will call it, into our hydrometer flask here, okay? When we have that done, we're gonna bring that water level up to a thousand milliliter mark. Everybody's following me? I know there's a lot of steps here. Once we do that, what I would do is put it into our water bath. It's nice that you have a water bath. If not, every reading you take, you're gonna need to basically do calculations based off of water temperature. All right, so we're gonna put this in here until it basically comes out to 20C. We have our thermometer back here that we can check between readings and that sort of thing just to make sure we're at 20. All right, once this reaches 20, we have our material, it's filled up already, okay? We have our giant Flavor Flav clock on the wall, all right? We need to then put a stopper in the end of this. I don't know where it is. Use your hand like the old timer in the picture, all right? And just back and forth. 60 times? 60 seconds. Oh, 60 seconds. Okay, at that one minute, we're gonna then basically put this back in here, all right? And then we have our readings. I believe the readings are two minutes, five minutes, you can take readings before or after, but the biggest thing is that once we put that in, and I'm gonna ask you guys that, is that when we enter this hydrometer in, would be at a minute and 30 to get okay. a two minute reading. Okay, so about 30 seconds before, so that this thing isn't bobbing all around when it's two minutes, okay. because we can't get an accurate reading. So it just, that 30 seconds allows for this thing to kind of equal out a little bit so we can take a reading. All right, so it'd be two minutes, I take a reading, I record what my number is, all right? Then I'm gonna slowly take this out of my solution, put it back in my cleaning thing and just spin it around, all right? Meanwhile, I'm monitoring the time, waiting for my five minute reading, all right? At which four minutes, 30 seconds in, I will take that, put it back in to get my five minute reading, all right? And I'm gonna keep recording that. All right, on their page here, it has all the different times, two minutes, five minutes, 15, 30, 60, 250 minutes, and 1,440 minutes. Okay? Everybody understands that? Okay. Once we have that done, we're gonna rinse this out, all this material, okay, over our number 200 sieve. So it's kinda like we're doing a wash. Whatever's retained on that number 200 sieve, we're gonna dry it out, and then the DOT has you guys do gradations on that material in which it's run over, what do you guys do for DOT here? 50 and 200. 50 and 200, I believe it was, for a normal, for a fine aggregate, and the 35 and 200 for a topsoil, okay? And then that would be that. If you are running a, a, a moisture content sample, obviously you're not running it on the sample that you just saturated here, it would be, to begin with, you'd have a separate sample, okay? So when it mentions, hydroscopic moisture content in the in the spec. That's a separate sample. It's not what you actually conducted this test on. Everybody understands that? Okay. So again, prepare your material based off of um, the makeup or the, the material type, okay? Everything's passing our number 10 sieve. All right, either we have 50 grams or 100 grams, okay? We're gonna take that material, add our sodium hexametaphosphate to it, mix it up, let it sit 12 hours. All right, once it sits, we empty it into our mixer, rinsing everything in here, filling that up about halfway with distilled water, putting it in the mixer, checking 60 seconds, we mix it up, all right? And then we take that and we're gonna put it into our hydrometer tube, I'll call it, all right? Once we do that, fill it up to 1,000 milliliters with the distilled water, okay? Let it equalize out to temperature. All right, mix up and down, back and forth, one minute, put back in, and then we're gonna start taking our readings, okay? So again, the big thing when we take our readings is we're gonna put this in 25 to 30 seconds before we want a reading, all right? And after every reading, we're gonna go ahead, put that in, spin it, all right, big thing, don't drop it in, and we can also check our water temperature right after each reading by placing that into our material, just to monitor that we're at 20, okay? Some people don't have 
a water bath which can hold it to a constant. So the water can come out of the tap at a certain temp and as the day goes on or as once you get to your last reading, the water is a lot different temperature wise than it was originally. All right. Once we get our final reading, we wash that over at 200, okay? Dry that material, and then we're going to sieve it over our 50 and 200, or 35 and 200. All right? Everybody's good. All right, That's it? Can we, can we take that agometer out? Mm -hmm.